most of the time you'll see water dripping from them and this one doesn't have the water really dripping from it out here all the water is dripping out from it inside but if you get close here you can hear it gurgling sucking in air well open it up and look what we found ice that is a lot of ice talk about at least a week right two weeks to build up that much ice here's another view of it that's a massive slab of ice y'all very cool not good for the customer but very cool to to see all right, so to thaw this out, that's what we gotta do. We gotta thaw it out. And we gotta shut off the compressor also. So to do that, you can see it's uh, controlled by a variable frequency drive. But we also have our simple thermostat connections here. This is Y1 and Y2, which come over here. And these right here, they just pop right out. So I pull this one and this one, Y1 and Y2, and then I move the fan from the normally open contact over to the normally closed contact. And so our fan is on now. And then I also pulled off this panel uh, to help suck in warmer air instead of air that's from downstairs. So that should help a little bit. Cause it's gonna take a little while. So a good key point to take away from this that I want to say is the reason we didn't see it dripping water, like you can see it's dripping water now. Most of the time when the drain's plugged, you can see it dripping water. But in this case, it wasn't because the negative static pressure in here was so strong that on all the seams, it was sucking in so hard that it wouldn't allow any of the water to go out and as soon as i opened this door it all gushed out and now that the door is open you can see that the water is dripping on the corners uh, and everywhere it can it's because i've relieved that that severe negative static pressure that real high static pressure and see it's pretty obvious also you can see that the blower is getting wet right there the motor's not getting wet which is important and what we're really concerned about because that static pressure is so high that fan is sucking so hard and it's trying to pull that much amount of air but only able to do it through that little bottom section of the coil that's not froze up so since half the coil is blocked we've got that excessively high negative static pressure so that when we have all the doors closed the water doesn't leak out like this on the outside edges because the negative static pressure is so strong that it's just sucking on all the seams everywhere and it's unable to to let the water out so i'm going to leave it just like that and then with the side return air opening to the outside uh, pulled off so that it can suck in outside air i got this one off uh, i mean open also so that hopefully it can kind of relieve a little bit of the of the water that's being sucked onto the coil, I mean the blower as hard as it is. Alright, so it's about an hour later. Only really an hour to to do that. It wasn't too bad. Uh, so these filters, they just get soaked. The ones uh, on the bottom, I mean, they're soaked. So I'd like to pull them out and, you know, drain them some. Like stand them up on a corner like this, you know, and, and just uh, let them chill for a minute. I guess you don't have to do 
that if you don't want. This one ain't too bad. The other one, like water just came pouring out of it when I pulled it out. Right there, it's got still got ice attached to it. Most of the time, the filters get destroyed anyways whenever ice gets in them and, you, and they get ripped and so it's not the biggest issue to worry about. So back to this now. So this is a compressor that was froze up. This is gonna be compressor circuit number two. So I'm gonna look on here. And this is gonna say for the, the contact is in the top left corner of the, of the box, got them up there. So that's gonna be K1 and K2. I'm gonna find those up here. K1 and K2. K2 is for compressor two, which is the top one. Let's test that. Make sure that, that works. Yep, that's the one. All right, so for compressor two, I'm gonna to wanna to energize that. It's gonna be circuit two, uh, Y2, I believe, the brown one. So for my testing and diagnostic purposes only, I'm gonna move the Y2 feed wire, supply wire, over to the normally closed side so that as soon as I plug this in, it should energize my compressor or there might be a little time delay but it won't be won't be that bad right there we go and circuit we're going to look for if it's low on refrigerant I need to get my other gauges actually because this should be 410A and it should yeah this gauge ain't big enough so it is dropping out uh some kind of switch is kicking it off. Maybe a high pressure, I don't know. Watch this high pressure just go up to like 800 real quick. That's what's killing it, high pressure. I know my gauge is messed up, but it's gonna go around. I right now it's at 250. It's gonna go around like to all the way over here, man. It's crazy. Check it out. pressure there guys holy crap I think it's this one that's taking it out this one is a high pressure auto reset 588 PSI that's crazy man okay so on the discharge let's see what we have, I got a better gauge. So we see how fast it's rising there. And it looks like it's gonna peg out right there. All right, that's good enough for me, I know what it's gonna do. All right, so here's what I've come up with. Um, after I got it defrosted, I went to test circuit two this is um, this is all controlled by computer the, on EMS I'm not sure what's what computer it is but the computer gets a signal here this control gets a signal and then it energizes this uh, little terminal block which has your normal your normal you know Y R G Y2 Y1 Y2 common and also your W2 W1 so I was testing it and I energized W2 and G, which what that did was that turned on my compressor, but it didn't turn on my condenser fan motors. Um, then 
I was able to get my condenser fan motors on and then my blower kept dropping out, kept shutting off, uh, on and off, on and off, which is controlled by this VFD, um, which had a fault in it. I determined it had a fault uh, that was talking about overcurrent detected on deceleration. Uh, and it said in the manual that the, the faults need to be cleared um, because what it was doing is it would run. I had it energized with, uh, with I just run 24 volts straight to G constantly, which is the same thing that the the computer does. So I didn't, I don't see what would be different about that. But after I cleared that fault, the fan stays running now all the time. So now we've got everything is being uh, controlled and energized by the computer. I don't have anything jumped here. So we're getting um, 24 volts to our fan. And then uh, Y1 just dropped out. But then also we had the compressor for Y1 was not running. If you remember earlier, only the top half of the coil was, was iced up. The bottom half was not. Um, and I didn't notice it, you know, at the time, but compressor one wasn't running. Uh, and that's because this plug, that this red plug, it, it was unplugged. So that goes to the high pressure switch. So compressor one has not been running the whole time, which is why we had, you know, only the top half of the coil for compressor two was froze up. So I'm not sure, I'm still kind of not 100% on this as to why it was acting the way it was. Um, you know, I'm learning still also, but it's, it's cool. The only way to learn this stuff is to work through them and to do as much of them as you can instead of giving up. But as of now, once I got the fan working, I was able to check the refrigerant charge and the refrigerant charge is good. Um, and I kind of suspected the charge would be good too because when we, when I first saw the ice, I mean, it was an even sheet of ice. So whenever you got a, a, an ice up because of a, a low charge, it's not gonna be an even sheet like that. It's gonna be like uneven. Uh, you know, it won't look nice and flat and all the way across. It'll be, disproportionately shaped like one side will be half or it'll be the bottom half it, it's always different but as of right now it looks to me like uh, the system's operating the way it should be looks like it's operating normally I cleared the fault out of the VFD I don't know why the VFD uh, you know created that fault or that alarm um, but it's gone now um, the fan just cycled off, and I believe we're good, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. And uh, I got everything that I found noted uh, on my paperwork. We had compressor one unplugged, uh, the freeze up, and the fault in the VFD. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, catch y'all later.